join me today as I show you how to make a really fun project. We're going to make some beef roasts so the dolls in your dollhouse can have a special dinner. So join me and see how easy this is. our beef roast, our meat roast, we're going to need two colors of clay. Now this is our meat color and it's a mixture of equal parts of Fimo red, Fimo white, Fimo translucent and then I didn't have any Fimo in a, the right color so I'm using a Primo and a Sienna uh, to brown it up a little bit and make it look like, like raw meat. We also need our fat and our fat is three parts translucent to one part um, white. So our fat we need to run through our you need to roll it down really, really thin. And I'm rolling it through my pasta machine here off camera as thin as I can. Should have done this before I started the camera, but I didn't think of it. Okay. Ah. And it's going to kind of fall apart when you run it through that thin. At least it always does on my pasta machine. Now we're going to make kind of a cylinder. We're going to kind of work with our clay make it into a little cylinder. We're not down to size yet. We're not kind of a chunky little cylinder and we're going to take a knife and just cut in and we're not cutting all the way through. What we're going to do is just start the cut and then use that kind of break it apart. And it's not going to cooperate. Let me take a piece of fat. We don't want that cut to be straight is the thing. We want it to be kind of uneven. We're going to put that back together and crunch it back together, make our cylinder. And now we need to roll this down. It's okay to have a little fat there. Now I like to take some fat about halfway around, and that's all we need for fat. Now I'm going to roll this down. And rows come in different sizes, of course. They come, we want this about a half inch in diameter. So I've got my ruler here. I'm going to roll this down. And that's, that's pretty good. Now I have just a little bit of white embroidery floss because we're going to make a tied roast. So I'm going to split this down. I just want one strand. Take it around our roast leaving ourselves a little bit on the end. Let's see if I can tie this. And you want it to come in a little bit. You want it to dent in. Just as if the butcher had actually tied this. Take that off. And again. A little easier to do this when you're not trying to make sure that the camera can see what you're doing. I'm just going to do two. Normally I would do three ties, but right now I'm just going to do two and uh, I'll tie some more when I get off camera. No, it's not very tight. So we cut our strings off close to the roast, just like you would in real life. Now, okay, clean up the end. We're going to cut it just past that last top. And there we have a roast with just a little bit of fat running through it. And if you want to, you can kind of go around and kind of push right where that fat comes onto the meat, kind of loosen it up if you want to, that's optional. Another thing to do is kind of make these little lines like this. It'll kind of look like, make it look a little more realistic. Now since this is pretty thick, 
This will need to bake for a while. This will need to bake whatever your clay says for temperature for probably about 15 minutes because that's a pretty thick piece of meat or piece of clay. So let me get this baked off. I'll tie off the rest of this. I'll get them baked and then I'll be back. All right, so these are all baked off now. And yeah, they're a little big. These would be a very large roast in the dollhouse. Uh, you could go smaller. You could make these bigger. You could scale this up to Barbie size. That would work too. So now that they're baked, how do we display them? Well, if you have a roasting pan for your dollhouse, you might want to just make the roast to fit the roasting pan. And make sure it fits before you bake it. And display it in there. If you want it to look like you just came home from the market, depends on what type of market your doll shops at. This is just a piece of white wrapping tissue. You can put it right there and it's optional. I would glue it on, but you don't have to. And today I'm just using some super glue because that's what I've got here. Super glue will work just fine. And now it looks like, sh like your dolls just brought home some meat from the butcher. What if you have a more modern doll? What if you want your doll to have shop more at the supermarket, which is probably more common for most of us? Well, this, I'm going to make a meat tray. This is just a little piece of white craft foam. I think we've all used this, you know, the white sheet of white craft foam, the two millimeter thick kind. That's the thin one. And it costs like 69 cents for a, pack, for a sheet of that at um, Joanne Fabrics. I know this because I had to buy this because I couldn't find my white. So I didn't get this quite as square as I would like there. Now again, a little drop of glue. The glue is optional, but it will be easier to handle. And we'll let that sit. Now, plastic. This is just a piece of plastic wrap from my kitchen. You know, the same stuff you use to wrap your real food up in. We'll just cut this off and lay it down. Now I should let that dry, but I am going to attempt to do this without letting it dry. I'm going to live dangerously. A little drop of glue. Let's trim this down just a little more. And you can trim this up more after you get it, after the glue sets up. And then just pull the plastic down. Oops, let's trim off that little tail. A little drop of glue. Try not to glue our fingers to our miniature. It's one of the reasons I don't use super glue very often. But there we go. We have a wrapped roast that the doll family has just brought back from the grocery store so they can make a special dinner. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure and check out the blog post for more details. There's always more to learn there. And come back again next week for another fun video.